Today's global infrastructure is built around transportation which relies almost completely on fossil fuels. However, with the current consumption, oil will run out by the year 2070. Furthermore, emissions from fossil fuels have caused climate change that seriously impacts many people's lives. A possible solution as an alternative of fossil fuel cars has already been proposed, electric cars. This switch is ultimately inevitable. If we make the switch to transportation completely powered by electricity, we will need an abundance of lithium batteries to power all the cars we have with current technology. But how will we retrieve this lithium? And how much will it cost? How does lithium mining work? Does it have any relevant environmental impacts? Lithium, as the lightest metal, is abundant in the world. However, it is scattered in low concentrations that makes production not so economic. There are many sources of lithium, including hard rock deposits, salt lake brines, oceans, and others. Extracting lithium from oceans and seas costs approximately $80 per kilogram. The production cost of lithium that comes from salt lake brines is about $2 to $3 per kilogram. It takes around six to eight dollars to produce one kilogram of lithium out of spodumen. As a result, many lithium mining businesses choose to mine lithium from brines. Questions to consider are, what are brines exactly and how do we produce lithium from them? Brines, also known as salar brines, are underground res reservoirs that contain highly concentrated dissolved salts such as lithium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. They are generally found under dried lake beds, known as salars, and form under arid climates. In order to extract lithium, brines are first pumped to the surface of dried lake beds. They evaporate in a succession of artificial ponds under the sun. This is why the whole process is often referred to as solar evaporation. In each pond in the chain, brine enters at one end, loses some of its water, and is transmitted from the other end into the next pond. The process takes weeks or even months. Multiple ponds are used in order to separate the various evaporite minerals that crystallize out in sequence. At one point, calcium hydroxide is added to induce precipitation of magnesium as hydroxide. The concentrate in the last pond enriched in lithium and depleted in other cations is pumped to a chemical plant. Here, unwanted elements that are still present in the concentrate, such as boron, are removed. End products such as lithium carbonate, lithium hydroxide, and lithium metal are produced. So, keeping this process in mind, what could be the potential impacts on groundwater? So one of the, one of the concerns that I think um, people have with this process is that if the aquifer where that brine is located in, is that aquifer hydraulically connected to uh, surrounding sort of freshwater aquifer systems. So there's a lot of interest now in trying to understand the nature of the hydraulic connection between the brine aquifer and other freshwater um, aquifer systems. Because a lot of times these brines, they sit in basins where a lot of the water comes from um, higher elevation areas, um, perhaps sourced as snowmelt that comes into the basin through either streams or groundwater systems that then um, emanates, comes back up to the surface and discharges into like marginal wetlands, you know, where there's a lot of um, wetland dependent evapotranspiration that occurs. So um, as the water table is lowered in the brine aquifer, it could have the impact of lowering the water table in the freshwater aquifer, which then perhaps could lower the um, you know, lower the water table enough such that the springs, um, you know, the water table doesn't impact, intersect the surface anymore. So you could imagine a scenario where if the withdrawal of water out of the, withdrawal of brine out of the aquifer um, is keeping pace with that evaporation, there may be, you know, um, minimal impact, you know, and so um, I think um, a lot of, you know, specifically in some of the arid environments, um, there's a lot of interest trying to understand how do these, how are these systems behaving naturally, and then how are they behaving when they're being perturbed by, you know, uh, brine pumping operations like that. And what are the environmental impacts associated with solar evaporation ponds? I think, you know, one of the one of the one of the concerns is, you know, if animals, you know, like get into the ponds, um, there are 
situations where um, you know water waterfowl may want to try to land you know in the ponds or something like that and think that it's a it's a lake and you know may um, you know because once they get the brine the birds get the brine on their feathers or something like that they would um, you know have a hard time surviving that or perhaps even drinking the brine which is which is bad. Keeping in mind these impacts as we move forward, it is imperative that we consider different methods of lithium mining to reduce environmental damage and costs. It is also worth exploring batteries that require less lithium because our future will be reliant on lithium and our understanding of it.